Welcome back. Today is day two of my new system. I mentioned a couple of videos ago that what I'm going to try to do, at least for a while, is to each day analyze the rapid game that I played on Lee Chess the night before, do some puzzle rush, and if I have time left, do something else like puzzles or play a bot. But anyway, this is my second day. It worked out well yesterday. The only problem that I think I might have is how much time it's going to take to do all this, but I'm going to try. This is the rapid game that I played on Lee Chess last night. You can probably see part of the graph down there at the bottom. Uh, according to the little game review chart here, I only had one blunder. My opponent had one blunder and one mistake. And we each had a handful of inaccuracies. It looks like my blunder was probably right here just after we entered the middle game. This is much more common to my games where I do okay or sometimes even get an advantage in the opening. But then sometime in the middle game, there's a complex tactic that I miss. Hopefully it was complex and not simple because that would be embarrassing. But anyway, that's this is normal for me. If I do win, it's because my opponent blunders sometime as we're going into the end game. I'm going to try to figure out what went wrong there. This was, if I'm not mistaken, the second time that I played the English opening in a rapid game. And it's working out well for me so far. Let me turn on the engine here and play a couple of moves. I think this is all normal and probably book. Oh, it, it's probably not book <laughs> or barely book because we've uh, gone down to just a handful of master games here. Before that, there were 26,000 games here. Almost every master who has played this position gets the knight out or the other knight out or puts the bishop over here on b4. Only 10 out of 26,000 games, only 10 put the bishop on c4 like this. I'm guessing that if we switch to the Lee Chess Players database, which I'm doing because I'm still trying to learn this opening, so I'm trying to see what the idea is here. Okay, there were 11 million games reaching this position, but only one and a half of them on Lee Chess got the bishop out here. Okay, so it's a little bit more common among players on Lee Chess than it is among masters, but anyway, looks like I should play e3 or knight to f3 or a3 or g3. Uh, g3 is the most common here, which kind of surprises me. What about in the masters? In the masters, e3 is most common here. I'll try to keep that in mind, but since we're basically out of book at this point, I played g3 because that's what I did in the previous game and it worked out okay. My opponent played one of their top moves and I'm just going to move on through here. It doesn't look like either one of us made a huge mistake here. I should have played d4 now. Okay, that makes sense because I have a queen and a knight both defending that square. I assumed they would take and then I would take I guess that's what it says and then they would get the knight out there to protect the bishop and I would play b3 to protect that pawn that that's according to stockfish's top line but I played the rest of it here I'm preparing to castle one thing that I don't like about this position is how uh, I'm not occupying any center squares while my opponent is but I am controlling or pointing at one center square with two different pieces I'm controlling a couple of, you know, a few different squares across the, uh, you know, the other side of the board there. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm just so used to having a pawn on one of those two squares that it's a little odd, but at least I, I think I understand the point of this. My opponent played C6, which wasn't good because I think they should have put their knight there and now I should play D4, but I didn't yet. I'll admit that when they played the A pawn, I thought, oh, it's probably just to put the bishop back because that's what happened, I think, in the previous game where I played the English. But when they did this, I wasn't sure what they were going to do. Were they trying to bring the queen out or were they going to, you know, trying to reroute the bishop around behind those pawns? I just didn't know. But just in case they were thinking of bringing the queen out and lining up here, I went ahead and played E3 now. It doesn't look like that's one of my top five moves. Okay. That was one of my inaccuracies. It is one of my opponent's best moves to drop the bishop back one and my best move to castle. Okay, so, uh, you know, I made it to move seven without any serious problems. So I think I'm doing okay with this opening and I'm going to keep trying it. Knight to f6 was their best move. d4 now again is my best move. Okay, I, I guess I was hesitating and I wasn't sure. So I played d3. h6 was not one of my opponent's best moves. Well, it popped up there. Okay, when I said that, it, uh, or when I started saying that, it wasn't there, but as I was saying it, it popped up. I'm not sure exactly why. Now I played d4, but it's not one of my top moves. All right, so we're dead even. My opponent isn't supposed to take it. They're supposed to push past it. Oh, because I guess I was guarding that square. But wait, couldn't they have done that before? No, they couldn't have done that before because their bishop was, was here. So when I pushed forward, if they came past, I would have gotten their bishop when they got my knight, I guess. But yeah, it looks like it would have been a little bit better for them to push past and threaten my knight, but they took, and it would have been better for me to take with my knight. That surprises me. Not a lot better, just a little better, and, and I really am not sure what the difference is, but I took with the pawn. Their king was still in the middle, so I that's why I moved that, you know, that's why I got the pawn out of the way. I thought, if they don't castle now, I can punish that. Maybe not severely, because they could always block my check with their bishop, but, but that's what I thought here. Yeah, in fact, it says... 
um, some of the other possibilities that they could play, that's what I would do is check and then they would block with their bishop. So, you know, if they played d5, I would check, they would block with their bishop. But castling is the only move of theirs that's not a mistake. Well, my opponent castled. I guess they saw that coming. Bishop to e3 was one of my better moves. Rook to e8 was one of their best moves. And I was supposed to play queen to b3. Or rook to e1 anyway. I'm not going to go through the whole list there, but but my queen's the only piece that hasn't developed yet. All the other pieces are developed. I've got some pawns out here in front controlling center squares. I wanted to get my queen off the back rank, and I thought, why not put it here? I, I don't know what the problem with that is. I'm surprised it's not counted as inaccurate because, because it says it took me down to 0 0.2, minus 0 0.2 from plus 0 0.4. But I thought from here it continues to defend the bishop. But maybe I want the pawn to defend the bishop. I'm not sure. But I did get my queen off the back rank, and my opponent immediately attacked my queen. Uh, not sure why I'm supposed to just take it now, and I did. Okay, and then they're supposed to take back, and they did. I'm looking at the suggested move list here, trying to figure out why or how I would have determined that this is my best move. I'm not sure why I would want to line the rook up with the queen here, or bishop to f4. I'm not sure what that does. Or c5. I guess I get c5. If they took, then I would take and my bishop would be protecting it. But what if they just pushed past and then their rook is, you know, cemented in there? I guess I could always move the knight out of the way and attack with the rook, which is what I did. But I, I don't know why that was such a big problem. Oh, it's a big problem because, because they take my bishop. Really? Okay, well, that's what my opponent did. And it kind of surprised me, you know, that, that they took the bishop. Now, my next move was my blunder. I should have... I should have captured on f7 with my knight. I guess it's my only blunder of the game, so I, I'm going to focus some time right here and then... But anyway, yeah, I, I guess the idea is that, I'm, uh, that I was going to lose this knight. I thought I had to take the rook first, and I guess I was willing to lose two pieces for the, for the rook. I'm not sure what I was thinking here. I know that here I wasn't thinking they were going to take the bishop. Here I thought they were going to go back. But I guess I guess my opponent saw that they, you know they could get two pieces for the rook and and so that's what they did. They went there and what I should have done since I'm going to lose the knight anyway, I should have captured here, which threatens the queen. And it says they would have taken back. Would that have been an only move? Yes, it would have been an only move. In other words, the only move that's not a blunder. For example, if they just moved the queen out of danger, I would have taken the rook and then the knight would have been protected by by my rook. Okay, so my opponent probably would have figured that out had I played it and they would have taken there. I would have taken here with check and they would need to go back and then we would have been dead even. And it says I'd want to play rook f4 at that point. I Or queen to c2, just slide over one, or queen to d3. Okay, so I'm wanting my queen on this diagonal. I guess I get that that pawn's not defended, but it's weird that this line here says I should have played queen that it was expecting me to play uh, queen to d3 but that's like my third best move very interesting okay but yeah stockfish wants me to either put my rook up on f4 or my queen on this diagonal i'm not sure entirely what i would be aiming for but i but i think i do understand the blunder here uh, if i'm gonna lose the knight anyway i might as well take a pawn with it and then take this with a with a tempo but instead i took this first which allows the knight to be lost Correction. Uh, I'm trying to phrase this in a way that actually makes more sense. The way that I did it means that I lose the knight with no compensation. I don't even mess up their pawn structure because their queen's going to take it. That's why I understand this. If you're going to lose the piece anyway, take the pawn first because I'm still going to get the rook, right? If I take the pawn and they try to save the rook or something, of course, I'm going to get the queen. So here they either have to move the queen or take with the king. And then I'm going to get this rook and if they didn't take the knight, it's going to be protected. I, I understand that. I understand why this was a blunder. I'm not sure why it puts me down minus three, because even after they take that, they're only up one point of material. They got a knight and a bishop for a rook. Okay, and I should have played a4, or queen to c3, or queen to b. It wasn't horrible for me to do this, but I'm not sure why it wasn't my best move. They're supposed to drop this back this way, but they took, which was their blunder. And now I'm ahead for the rest of the game. So if I'm playing with the black pieces here, what would what could clue me into that? There's four different moves that maintain an advantage for black here. This is the best one, it says. The second best one is here. Third best one is to go all the way back to the home square. Fourth best is g4. All of those maintain some degree of advantage for black. But taking with the pawn wasn't even their fifth best. Fifth is knight to d7 now and just let me have the bishop. That's their fifth best move. So why is this worse? Of course, it's only really bad if I take, which I, I was going to, and I wasn't going to take this way be, because, because I wanted the rook to be pointed at the queen. Okay, but that's why it's bad. 
Okay. I, you know, it's because of the results. I, I don't know that I would have seen it before this happened, but once I took here, now they've lost the bishop. That's why it's bad. So if we back up, my opponent had six and a half minutes left here in a 10 minute game. That's plenty of time to calculate. If he does this and I do this, then they're going to lose the bishop because if they move it, I'm going to get the queen, right? And then there's not even anything defending the queen. I'm going to get the queen for free. They, they must have been thinking I was going to take this way. And then they could just move the bishop. Uh, that had to have been what they thought. How much time did they spend on that pawn move? Three seconds. Okay. So I, I do understand my opponent's blunder. And I think it's a, at about the same level as my blunder. It requires seeing a, a couple of moves ahead. It's not an immediate hanging a piece. But it's basically hanging a piece due to a tactic on the following turn. But yeah, it does look like they played pretty quickly here. That took, took that in three seconds. How long did I spend on my next move? Oh, I, I took back immediately. No, no seconds. So I must have pre-moved that. All right. Well, I should probably stop pre-moving. And they played one of their better moves, which was to get the queen out of the way. And now, oh, I should have taken the bishop with the pawn. Oh, no, I, I wanted to take with my rook and have my rook on the, the open file. But oh, I OK, if I take with the pawn, then I have a passed pawn. Oh, wow. And then they would have to hop their knight in here to guard that square. Yeah, but, but then I can't advance the passed pawn, but this way I can. Okay, well, that was my second best move. It is their best move to get the knight out so their rook is free. C5 is my best move. I, why? Wouldn't they take it with one of the many pieces they have guarding that square? Right? All, all those pieces are... Sorry, another one. They, they, have, they have four pieces guarding that square, and I only have one attacker or one defender. So it says that I go here, I, I would expect them to take with the bishop... Why would I expect them to take with the bishop since they just lost a bishop and they would could lose one here? But it says I wouldn't take it at that point. I would play queen to e2. I did eventually play c5, but now I've got three connected pawns, one of which is passed, and that's that one. So they have to move the bishop. Now I get now I have two passed pawns and they're connected, so it's just a matter of pushing those. Uh, there's no reason to worry about this hitting my rook because I can promote. It's their best move to just block here with the bishop, I think. Uh, but they moved their king. And it's my best move to check now. But instead I just took that queen and now I have a queen and they don't. So, you know, it was not too difficult. I, I was impressed that my opponent played on just for a little bit. And then at this point, they resigned. It says I have a mate in eight, but wait, did I miss? I missed a mate after this. I had a mate in five, but I played the second. Okay, taking that queen was my second best move. So again, I have a mate in five. Oh, the knight's hanging. I missed. Okay, so I did have a miss here. I don't know if the other site would have counted that as a miss. But yeah, I, I definitely had that. But I was looking at checks. That's a check. I just didn't see it. No, I wasn't looking at checks. I was looking at this pawn because what I played was work to D1 to get behind the pawn. Oh, and also to get out of danger here. Well, I probably should have been looking at checks or he, and then I might have found this. I did have enough time. Okay, so I did miss that. I played here. It's still made in seven. When they played that, I have a made in six, but again, bishop to D5. I guess that cuts off escape squares from the king, which already can't go here. Oh, nice. But instead I checked and they blocked there. Now I have a mate in three, queen to e6. Oh, wow. Why I? Okay, so I do have some work to do, but I did win the game. I'm happy about that. One thing I forgot to check back here on my blunder. How much time did I spend on it? 854. I only spent three seconds. Okay, so wait, my opponent only spent three seconds on their blunder, right? Is that what we determined? Okay, so take longer than three seconds in these complex positions. All right. Well, I think I understood my blunder and I understood my opponent's blunder, even though neither one of them were, in my opinion, elementary. Both of our blunders were intermediate, which you would expect because we're intermediate players, I guess. They both required asking what's the opponent going to do if I play this and then, you know, thinking of another option for that move like I should have with my knight. I should have taken that F pawn because I could see I'm going to lose the knight. Might as well take a pawn with it and then still get the rook. I took a little longer than I'd hoped, but I think I got something out of it. Thank you for spending your time here. I'll see you next time.